uh, Tanya, we're, we're listening to the unattended. DeBose family right now at the prosecutor's and of course, office. When there is a vacuum of information, that's where all the speculation comes from. That's where all the anger comes from. So firstly, uh, to just thank Mr. Dieter's office and law enforcement for having done a quick and seemingly thorough job in taking, taking care of this. Two, and the family will echo this, this is a very trying time for the family. That's pretty obvious. It's also a trying time for the community, for Cincinnati, and because this is now getting the attention it's getting, and it's a next chapter in a lot of events that have happened similar to this, where cop and citizen or cop and black interactions lead to tragedy, we want to make sure, and the family is firmly behind, that though we understand the concerns in the community, we want those reactions to be completely peaceful. Sam was a peaceful person. Um, there have been some questions about how peaceful Sam was, and I think those questions have now been put to rest when you look at that video. There was this suggestion of whatever, dragging the officer, the arrogance towards the officer, failure to comply, whatever. I think anyone who's now looked at that video understands that Sam was who Sam always has been, and that was peaceful and non-aggressive. We want his memory to remain intact as a peaceful person, and we do not want any violence, any anger to come out in a way that denigrates who he was and who we want to be remembered as. So, we understand the emotions tied with this. The family feels more than most the emotions of this loss, but we really want any reaction to it to be one maintaining the integrity of who Sam was and the peacefulness that not only the family deserves as they continue their mourning, but this is an opportunity now that Cincinnati has to do this in a proper way. We've now made a huge first step because in a situation where sometimes people believe that officers are not held accountable for their actions, in this case, one is being held accountable. So Cincinnati is showing the rest of us how to do this right. I'm not a Cincinnatian, but I do know that the country is now looking at Cincinnati as to how you're going to react to this, and we're just asking that it be done in a way that moves us forward and that fellow Cincinnatians and fellow law enforcement officers looking at this case can be proud of. So that's our position. If you have questions, I'll be glad to address them. Somebody asked. They were going to make a statement in a moment, so certainly I, I didn't know if there was any. Well, you, you had said, you were wondering if there would be an indictment because it's hard for grand juries to indict cops and there hadn't been much time for the investigation. Are you surprised? Yeah, I, I am a little bit surprised, to be honest with you. Without, since I didn't see the video, and nobody saw the video, it's easy to sit back and say, you know, you look at that three-page police report, and quite honestly, as Mr. Dieter said, that was self-serving, wasn't it? Now that we know, you can't look at that video and say that that police report follows the video. It doesn't. It contra contradicts it. So my concern, having done this for a long, long time, is just that, that, you know, you look at police reports and they can on occasion be self-serving. This one obviously was. And if there wasn't a video available, I do not believe he would have had an indictment. I believe the one officer would have said what he said in that report and followed up with it. The other officer who seemed to say maybe he saw the dragging, maybe he was just told about the dragging, all of a sudden becomes a cooperating witness but now that we have a video, we don't have that problem. So if you had asked me the question after I saw the video, I would have said, without question, an indictment. Mr. Dieter's had that opportunity before I did and, and did what I think he did with the grand jury because of the video and the other information he gathered. You, yes? What, what does that say about, about where we are in America with policing? When you say, if not for that video, you wouldn't have had, okay? <laughs> we are, I truly believe that we are seeing the crisis now, but that it has existed for a long time. You ask anyone uh, who, in the, anyone in the black community, and they know that what's existed in the criminal justice system has been biased for decades. I've done this for 30 years, and my, the, my practice is skewed in favor of young black males in the system. Why? Because they're brought into the system more. So yes, we're seeing a crisis. If there's a silver lining, 
to what's been happening for the past few years, beginning with all the cases three, four years ago that have really started this conversation or maintained this conversation, it is that we are finally talking about it. And I do think that body cameras are, should be mandatory with law enforcement because, unfortunately, when you have cops who may not be well enough trained, may not be well enough paid, and if you put a gun on their hip and they go do one of the most difficult jobs that we ask them to do, police ourselves from each other and do it for a year or two or a decade, you're going to get insensitive. And the problem with it is that then this can happen. So yeah, I do, I do think we have a crisis, but we also have a great opportunity. Yeah. I think there was uh, the second officer for semi-corroborating the story. Do you think there was an intentional cover-up or just, uh, you're my fellow officer, you say so, fine, or something else? I look forward to Mr. Dieter's office and whoever else should looking into why that officer seemed to have said what he said. I, I've never seen a sworn statement by officer number two that said, I saw dragging. But you read the report, and I read the report. And when I read that report, it said to me, officer number two saw the dragging. So, and he did not. Now, when he was put to task in his sworn testimony, did he change or modify that story? Once he realized there was a video which was going to contraindicate what he said, I don't know. But we have to stop having officers who think that it's better to cover another officer than it is to tell the truth. Do you, um, when you looked at the video, I guess I'm, I'm looking at it thinking, at what point did he have possibly felt afraid for his life? <coughs> I've seen. Uh, I've probably seen, I don't know, 500 videos of events, 300, I don't know what it is, but, and I've reviewed police, it's what I do. When I looked at that video the first time, I knew what I expected to happen. I expected to, there to be a tussle. I expected a, a escalation of the event, right? I expected that there was going to be some explanation for why somebody took out a gun and shot. And I'm watching it, waiting. The shot happened, and the car took off. And I actually, for a slight second, thought, OK, the shot's coming. The, the car's going to stop. He's going to catch up to the car. That's where the tussle is. And then I realized the shot had already happened. I, I'm not trying to dramatize it. When that shot happened, for absolutely no reason under the law as I know it. I know when you're supposed to use deadly force. You're supposed to use it when you have reasonable fear of great bodily injury. There was none of that. There wasn't an aggravation. There wasn't an increase in, in the situation, certainly not by Sam. It was horrific to see that anyone could think, now I can use a gun. So. Which must make it harder for, harder for the family than knowing almost. Well, and, and I know that mom wants to come up maybe for a moment and, and Yes, sure. So what, what do you know about Officer Tenzing at this point? Anything more than we've already heard? Not very much, except I know he's going to tell us that something was going on in his head unrelated to Sam, and that helped inform why he did what he did. Because like no, I, I, I believe that. He's going to have to come up with some explanation for how he thought it was appropriate to do what he did by taking out a gun to begin with, instead of letting that car leave or do whatever, and then firing it. The, if he has any training, and we have to presume he has some, he is trained on how not to use a gun before he uses a gun. That's what cops are trained to do, when to not use your gun, and only to use it under the most necessary circumstances. I don't think that Officer Tensing got up that morning and decided he was going to kill a black guy. But we know that the reason why young black males or blacks are in the criminal justice system more than they should be is because there are these almost subtle, unspoken biases that exist between all of us. We all make instantaneous decisions about each other. Unfortunately, it seems we are still making negative instantaneous decisions about blacks. And that seems to be one of the explanations for why it shows up in more arrests. So, active, no. Passive, probably. If you want to leave with a prayer, or do whatever you'd like. Yes. <coughs> oh.
when I was, when my son, the day that my son, that I heard my son was killed, and I came forth, and so many people was speak. It was a gentleman speaking of my son, and I knew that gentleman knew my son. The way he spoke of him, I knew he knew him. And I, I felt the need to go up there and just hug him. And when I came forth, I brought the Lord with me. He goes with me everywhere I go. And I said, the Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their ways. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Bless the Lord in all that you do, because, see, you get to know God, you, you got something. God is almighty. And I'm so thankful that, that everything was uncovered because I've been a servant of the Lord for as long as I've been living on earth. I've been, I've been loving the Lord. And I knew, I know the Lord. And I know the wrath of God. Also, I know the love of God. So I just thank God that everything is being revealed. I knew that he loved my child. I knew that this was not going to be un uncovered. And I pray that everybody out there, all the soldiers who was out there marching with me for the justice for my son, I thank you, and I hope that you continue to do this, not just for my son, but for many others, because, and I'm ready to join the battlefield, because my heart go out for so many that has been unjust. But it's only, y'all got to realize that God is in the forehead. God is God. We're, we, we're just the soldiers. He's fight the battle. Let him fight this battle and just be thankful. I'll, I want everybody to just lift up their heads in prayer and thank God because this one did not go unsolved and, and hidden. So thank, just lift up your heads and thank God and, and give him the glory and we're going to continue to fight together and God, with God, because he, we just the soldiers, and we're going to continue to lift him up, and I, I think more and more be unveiled, uh, be revealed, and all these people who's going out here, these wicked people, we already got the victory. We, we just got to know that, and thank everyone for doing all that they've done. Because you and your family have been, for the last nine or ten days, calling for release of that video and calling for the Yes. Um, I didn't, I mean, I, what I thought was is it was going to be covered up. I've heard many t stories and everything. It, but I, like I say, I trust God, and I knew that 
it was going to be all right. I knew that if this man, if, you know, went free and nothing was done to him, it was because he was a free, he, he was really a righteous man and didn't do nothing. But I knew that my son was a righteous man. I knew what my son, he had the same spirit that dwells in me, dwell in him. That's all he was fed. So I, and so if my son is righteous and he get killed, somebody had to be wicked here. This is what, and, and, and I wanted to bring, bring it to front. I wanted to, it, with this, I can rest because I knew it was something I'd just done beforehand. And I, I, and I thank everybody who, who came forward with the, with the information. I thought it should have, you know, I thought the person should have been locked up long, day one. He should have never been released if they saw the film. Why is he still walking the streets? Because it, it was murder. If he asks forgiveness, oh yeah, I can forgive him. I can forgive anybody. God forgave us. But God, I, God already, see, I didn't even think of nothing about him not getting, getting convicted here. Because, see, I was told that this man was released and nobody could find him. But he can't hide from God. See, our God is almighty, so I wasn't worried about that neither. Hubbard, you had said yesterday that you really wanted, all of you wanted to see the video, that you couldn't have peace or sleep until you knew what happened. Yes. Did you, seeing that video, did you peace? That, seeing that pit video let me know that my son did absolutely nothing. Not nothing, nothing to even provoke this man. See, my son was, he, he likes, he, he, he would love to get a laugh, you know, and I thought, well, maybe this man, he didn't try to get a laugh and make this man, you know, just put a different spirit on the situation. So, and he always had a joyful spirit. So I said, well, maybe Sam was playing with him and he took it the wrong way. And that could have been, you know, mistaken and and uh but i realized that this wasn't even the case that wasn't even the case you know um isn't it hard to make sense of it when you look at that video I mean, no because it's wicked in this world is this terrible and i mean and it but god is bringing it to the light it's through the people that love the Lord and serve him, they're going to find this wickedness. He's going to bring it out. He said what's done in the dark is going to come to the light. So this man was just one person that he knew that was wicked. And he, had, and he was going to bring this man to the light. Mm -hmm. been, you were talking about um, the joining the battlefield and you know, walking, marching with people. For people who, who, who they've been killed. By cops, but you know, no. yeah, but be sure, but no, no, no. Why I'm focusing on cops mm -hmm. is because so many people that came out and said about these cop killings. There's a lot of murders go unsolved, but my son, God, when God do something in your life, you know that touches your heart, and my son was killed by a cop unjustly. I got to believe, I got to know that there's many more people out there that's being killed by cops unjustly. And like people was on the battlefield for me, I want to be out there on the battlefield for them, but in God's name. And you know, let knowing that God is, is going to fight the battle, not me. I'm just a soldier in it. I want to be there for others like, like they was there for me. Okay. 
Can you start it over? I'm sorry. I want to make sure I reflect the family's position accurately on how this has turned out. So much has been said over the past week and a half to release the video. And, you know, local media joined in a lawsuit regarding that. Many people calling. it. I want to, as you've seen the video now, and I've heard the evidence that the prosecutor and now there's been an indictment, do you think, are you satisfied that you feel the investigation so far has been handled with the right way by waiting until this video has been released? Well, I think the investigation has been handled well. 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 You have been watching the press conference at the Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office, and now you're about to hear from Sam Dubose's. Uh, I believe this is his father. This is family members of the DuBose family. Awesome. I mean, couldn't go any better. What did you think when you saw the tape, sir? Hmm. I just thought that it was uh, unprovoked, senseless. That's what it is. The, I want to make sure the, fam the family is, and all along has been saying, don't do anything violent to Sam, because Sam wouldn't want that. Right. right. Oh, that's definitely our message. Uh, you know, Sam was peaceful. He lived peaceful. He lived peaceful, uh, you know, and in his death, we want to remain peaceful, you know. Um, like my mom said, you know, let God fight the battle. Um, you know, I'm a lifetime Cincinnatian. I remember, you know, 2001. You know, uh, we don't want none of that. That shouldn't happen. That's bad. But it's happened here for your brother. What does that mean to the family? Well, uh, it means that, um, you know, Sam had a higher purpose. It, it, this was God. This was God all the way from beginning to end. Um, he had a higher purpose to serve. It's bigger than just him being a great brother, great son. Uh, he had a purpose for the whole country. The, uh, the whole world, everybody can see these effects, these changes, and how Cincinnati handles things properly. Great, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Your name is Aubrey. My name is Aubrey. Yes. A U B R E Y. Yes. Cleshawn, All right, we've been listening to the DeBose family uh, giving their news conference, their reaction to the indictment today of UC police officer Ray Tensing in the shooting of Samuel DeBose back on July 19th. And uh, we watched the video, at least part of it earlier during the news conference, Carol. Uh, and of course, we moved our cameras away because we wanted to make sure we could, you know, protect the viewers because it's, it's something to it's see. it's a shocking thing to see. Absolutely. But now yes. we have the video in-house. Right. We're going to show you that video in just a moment, but let's go back because to the, the news conference and listen. was ready to corroborate every lie that the first officer said in the report. So I just want to be very clear that we feel for a lot of families out there, and I wasn't even really big on video cams, but every day now I'm going to be marching for video cams because my brother was re being prosecuted for trying to kill a police officer. He dragged him. He assaulted him. He gave him alcohol when there was never an open container of alcohol. He was everything violent because he had children and a weed ticket, some weed charges. That man shot my brother dead. This would be the same if it were not for that video camera. And this would be the same, I guess, if it wasn't for this prosecutor and our attorneys who worked diligently to say this won't be the same. I don't know what other people are doing or what other prosecutors are doing, but I do think the video camera is a big reason why this is different. Serena, are you, are you pretty satisfied right now the way this has turned out? Because there's been so much said about the video, the video. Yes. Do you well, we had every... We knew the video was going to vindicate our brother. When you know somebody, you know somebody. So we knew the video was going to, there wasn't like, oh, well, maybe could have, should have. We knew the video was going to vindicate our brother. 
I've, my brother is one year younger than me and I've known him his whole life. And I've known him to never ever run from a police officer. His record, as bad as anyone wants to make it, proves he has no problem being arrested. I am appalled every time I think about what I've been reading about my brother. I've been reading everything, you know, he's just one other thug in the neighborhood. We don't, I don't care if he was a thug in the neighborhood. He didn't have a gun. He didn't do anything to that officer. No one deserves this. So I'm, I'm angry, but I'm as pleased as I could be that we're actually gonna get some kind of justice for Sam. Um, but I don't think we would be getting it to get back to that. I just don't think we would without the camera because they were ready to have two police officers say that Sam dragged I mean, you all have to understand, my brother got murdered on Sunday night, and at 12.15, I got a call from my other brother to tell me that he was murdered. And when I got off the floor three and a half hours later, I started researching everything I could about this case because I knew when he said he was shot in the head by a police officer that that just didn't register for me unless the police officer just killed him. Now, I knew I was never going to be able to prove that, but I knew that's what had to have happened. And I'm sure a lot of other families around the country know that. They just don't have any video camera, or maybe they don't have a good enough attorney, which I thank God for. I don't know. Or maybe there's not a prosecutor that actually cares enough to do the right thing, or a grand jury, hallelujah, that will look at the case and say, let's really look at this case. I think there's enough to prosecute without the video camera. I think that. But I just think it would have been much more difficult because people don't listen. They just look at stereotypes. And my brother was about to be just one other stereotype. And that's not going to happen. Hmm. Yeah. Is there anything? Okay. Thank you.